Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is Vicious and welcome to a quick but important tutorial video. So today I'm going to be going over some of the stuff I've recently started setting up on my home server. I got a used server off of eBay and I put FreeNAS on it to make a home NAS. But FreeNAS is very powerful. It doesn't let you just use it as a storage solution. It also has jails in it which are, act like virtual machines. It can do a lot of services like Active Directory. We're going to have future tutorials coming out on how to set those kind of things up. And sometimes we can get quite deep into the techie stuff. So this preliminary video today is going to be showing you two really important techniques that I'm going to reference back to as I do those future tutorials. We're going to be showing you how to access FreeNAS from an outside software on your Windows computer. So we're going to be accessing FTP services using FileZilla and we're going to be accessing the shell using PuTTY. So neither one of those things will work out of the box without some configuration. So that's what this video is all about, is showing you how to do that. Now if you stumbled into this video and you have no idea what we're talking about and you want to get interested in it, FreeNAS is an open source free storage operating system. And you can just go to freenas.org and check that out. And there's lots of information here. You can read the about stuff, but if you really want to get into some help, go to the forums. That's the best place to go. Now, once you install it, you're going to plug it in uh, through USB, most likely, and install it. And you're going to run through all the setup screens. It's going to ask you to give it a password. And you're eventually, you're going to probably get an IP address from your router on DHCP. So you might get a random IP address. So what you want to do is look at that screen and find out what your IP address is going to be. So for me, right now, it's at 192.168.1.242. This is what FreeNAS looks like. This is the entire operating system as far as what you would see on your computer screen. Everything else you see is going to be done through the web interface, which is going to be another computer. So let me show you what this looks like if we go to that web interface. Now I'm going to log in as the root account. And for those who are not familiar with Linux and FreeBSD, root account is like the master account that holds all the keys. It is not something you normally would use on a regular basis to work on the system as far as using it. But when you're building it and configuring it, it's a good idea to get in there. That way you make sure you have enough permissions. So there's one very important thing to do off the bat to make your life a lot easier. And that's going to be to set up your network. So we have FreeNAS 11 here, and we have a lot of tabs across the top to make it easy to navigate. Under the network section, this is the host name. So this is how it's going to show up when you search for it by a name on your computer. So if I was to go into a command prompt and say ping FreeNAS, it would find it. So through the uh, DNS, it would find that host name and resolve the IP address. So that's what that's going to be doing. Now, uh, your def default gateway is very important to set. I think that a lot of people have issues with their boxes not working, and that's because they did not set the default gateway. So you should know what that is, I hope. But if you don't, go to one of your computers on your network at home and type in ipconfig, and you should find it in here. So here is my computer I'm on and you can see that my gateway is 192.168.1.1 which is going to be standard for most people unless you've changed it to something different. And then for your DNS servers, your name servers, my firewall acts as one. So I have my firewall and there's the first one and then 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4 are the very popular Google DNS servers. So I have those in there as backups. The next thing to do is, if you did not do it from within the FreeNAS setup when you did the installation, because you can do it in here, option number one, configure network interfaces, you can set them up with your static IP at that point in time. But if you did not, now's the time to go into here on the web interface and edit this and give it a static IP. Something outside of your DHCP scope, if possible, is a good idea. If not, I'd pick a high number up on your scope, which means the number of IP addresses that you can give out. That way you don't have another computer accidentally steal your IP address and cause a conflict. So with our network set up, we know that every single time this box is on, we're always going to come to this IP address to get to it. And that's going to make your life a lot more simple for accessing it. So 
Now moving into what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be activating two services so we can access our system from other software, FTP and SSH. So under the services tab, you'll find the FTP service is here and on a new box, it would be turned off and unconfigured and the same for the SSH. So I've already got those turned on and also starting on boot. And let me just show you the configurations. So on here, these are all our default values for port 21, clients 5, connections 2. Everything is default except I have enabled root login. This is disabled by default for security purposes because you don't want somebody being able to get into your system with root access if they were to somehow find your password out or try to do a brute force attack. I'm not too worried about it because this box is only accessible on my internal network, not anywhere outside of it. And if I wanted to, after I'm done setting up everything, I can come back and disable this. The SSH is very similar. It only has a few settings. Do have login as root with password enabled, allow password authentication is enabled, and our default port is port 22. So shell access, those who are Windows guys, that's the Linux and FreeBSD equivalent of your command prompt. You can get to it within the web interface. So if you go down here, you can see a shell. And this gives us a little command prompt where we can work on our system. But the problem with this web-based shell is it's very limited. You can't resize it. You can only choose static sizes. And if you ever fill the screen up with information, there is no scrolling back up on the screen to see what was there. So that becomes a big issue sometimes if you have a lot of information on screen. So to remedy to this, we'll be using outside programs. So we'll start with our SSH access. Go online and Google Putty. That'll take you to putty.org and there you can download the Putty software. Very lightweight, free to download, free to use software that's been around forever. Lots of network guys like myself use it, even in enterprise environments. So we'll open up Putty, and this is what it's gonna look like. You would type in your machine name here, so 192, or you can use the name or the IP address as long as your host name is resolving, but I usually put in the IP address directly. So 192.168.1.242, we're gonna be using SSH, and we have to put our port number in there. Once you've put all that in, you can actually save it as a preset and you can load it much quicker. Once we connect, it's going to ask us who we want to log in as and our password. And there we go. So now we are logged into the FreeNAS box using Putty on my Windows computer. This is a much easier to read, much easier to work with shell session. If I overfill the screen with information, I'm easily able to go and scroll back up. So the next thing is going to be our FTP access. So for that, we'll use FileZilla. So download it, type in FileZilla on Google, and you'll find the FileZilla project.org site. And this is where you can download FileZilla, also a free software. So this is what it's going to look like. We'll connect to it by putting our IP address in, our username, and our password. And connect. And now we have direct access to our entire file system on the machine. So this is a very powerful tool, as you'll see in some of the future tutorials where we're going to be setting up jails and lots of other options you can get access to add files to the server. You can take files off the server. You can search for files. You can change file permissions. The FTP access is gonna be very helpful to you. So trust me, in the other tutorials, you wanna have this ability. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is you can go to your site manager and save it as a preset the same way you would for Putty so you can access it faster. So for me, when I'm normally working on this, I can just drop down and choose free NAS and connect to it automatically. The last quick tip in today's video that's going to be really kind of cool, and you'll see us use this in the next tutorial where we set up our either our transmission or 
we're going to set up the media server Plex. I'm not sure which one we'll do next, but either Plex or Transmission, we're going to be setting up Jails on the FreeNAS box. And Jails are the free BSD version of like a virtual machine, but they don't have any desktop environment. There's no nothing visual. It's strictly code running in the background, and the only way you can see or do anything with it is through the shell. Well, if you go into the web interface, and I go to my Jails, and right now I have Plex running, Transmission running, NZB Hydra, and SAB NZB. Those are all running. If you click on the jail and you go down to the bottom, you can open up the shell for that jail. But as we already saw, this online shell is very limited. So how do you get SSH access to a jail from outside of this? And that is actually pretty easy to answer. Make your putty connection to your system and type in the command JLS for jails. It will list your actively running jails on the system, including their ID. And then you want to put JEXEC, -E the ID of your jail, and the type of shell that you want to use. I use TCache. And now I am the root user on the jail system. And that's how you get to it. So you'll see us using that in the next tutorial. It's a very handy way to get into it. Make changes to text files for configuration, move files around, copy files, change permissions. And this is going to be a lot easier than trying to do it through the online shell. So I hope everyone found this video useful. And I will be pointing back to it in the other tutorials. So that way we don't have to go over this information on all the other future videos. Because this will be a really good baseline knowledge. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments section. And I hope that I see you guys soon. This was Vicious, and I'll see you next time.